Hey, I'm Ryan Boyle, and you're watching PressPassTV.com. Hi, and welcome to PressPassTV.com. Thanks for joining us. I'm Morgan Page. Three New York Red Bull soccer players spend a large portion of their time together. They're roommates and good friends. They're representatives of the team's must-win and must-have-fun attitude. These guys help set the tone for the team as the leaders. In this next segment, we get to know who these guys really are and what makes them tick. Michael Artsis reports. During college, I, I played, and then towards the end of my career, figured out if, and tried to see if there was an opportunity to continue playing, and sure enough, got drafted. Uh, I started my career in Kansas City, of all places. It's a big change from, from California and or New York. Good. Hold for him. New York Red Bulls defenseman Taylor Graham is loving life. Since joining the Red Bulls, life has changed a lot for Taylor. For starters, the professional soccer player has two roommates, his good friend and Red Bulls defenseman Todd Donovan, who was also a college teammate at Stanford. By the way, you, you've killed my neck from doing the pull-ups. Maybe, maybe we need a better warm-up. I like to call them the brain trust because uh, they both think they're really, really smart. You know, obviously they're both uh, Stanford grads and... Uh, they like to kind of rub it in people's faces that they went to Stanford and they think they're uh, all these smart hot shots. <laughs> so, um, no, they're good guys though, always trying to have a good time. And that would be the third roommate, Red Bulls forward Seth Stamler. You know, we joke around, you know, about 90% of the day just uh, jabbing each other and giving each other a hard time. And, you know, I think it makes it fun and, um, you know, you know, create, creating friendships at the same time. The three have become inseparable, and that is part of what is making life grand for Taylor. Start us off, my friends. You know, I think our, our team's lucky, <laughs> lucky in the fact that we're surrounded by a lot of great guys. It hasn't always been like that in uh, this organization or any professional environment, but it seems like this year uh, we just have a great group of guys. Everyone, you know, likes to have fun, but then when it's time to get on the field and play, everyone knows it's time to be serious and uh, go out there and get wins. Another part is experiencing life off the field with three friends in the big city. <laughs> it's been a dream. I, I mean, I do what I love to do every single day, and I have the, the free time to take advantage of all the other things I like to do, whether it's hit golf balls or go in the city and see live music or just go exploring. It's, uh, it's the best it's the best way to live in uh, this, this uh, city because you get uh, everything you want. Oftentimes what the guys want to do is have fun and they sure know how to do that. While practicing for an upcoming golf tournament, the guys couldn't help themselves but let loose. So here we go, 10 head spins and then hit the ball. Nine, 10. <laughs> And the ragging on each other never seems to stop. The three of us have had this debate numerous times about where you're from. I grew up in a small, a small little town called Fair Oaks. Oh yeah, Fair Oaks. Fair Oaks. Yeah, no one knows where Fair Oaks is. So whenever anyone asks me, for example, like on the ESPN games, they say where you're from. I say Sacramento because I live in a suburb of Sacramento. And these guys say I have no sense of pride for my small community. You know. I do. <laughs> these guys seem to find creative ways to do everything. We have this uh, fun yeah. poker we play yes. where uh, <laughs> the loser, you know, parking's kind of difficult where we are. We don't have a driveway or anything. So we, uh, we play poker and the loser has to give up their parking spot at any time. So if, if they're, you know, in a good spot and, and you're, you're driving home late at night and there's no spots, sometimes you have to park, you know, a decent ways away. Like instantly you have to give it up and Taylor, right now, Taylor owes Seth a spot. So at any moment, you know, he, he can uh, he can give up that spot. Make sure I don't get hit. Pretty good game. <laughs> I, I was actually up one spot, but uh, it was too nice and ended up losing two games in a row, so now I'm down a spot. 
but there is a serious side to these guys too. It's the Sporting Chance Foundation. That's actually a foundation that Seth's starting after he took a trip to Haiti this last offseason with some of the New York Red Bull players. Um, he's in the process of starting a website and uh, putting stuff online and getting a foundation started to help uh, some, some kids in Haiti uh, go to school and, and play soccer. And they never seem to forget how far they've come and that they're living the dream. I think you always kind of dream of that. You always dream of being a professional athlete, but you know, the chances of it happening are you're slim to none. So, you know, from my perspective, it was always, you know, I got good advice, you know, do your schoolwork, get, get through that. And if things work out and, and you have a chance to play, then go for it. So you kind of take a two, two prong approach. It's a little different than in Europe. You know, guys in Europe, when you're eight, when you turn 18 and you finish high school, um, you either turn pro or you go to college. It's not both, and we kind of get the luxury of both. So, it, you know, it's a different system, and it works out well for us because if, you know, 99% of the people don't get that chance, they have school to fall back on. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's something obvious I always dreamt about when I was a kid. You know, didn't know whether it was actually going to come true or not. I actually started playing when I was five. Um, hey John. My parents just happened to sign me up for a, a rec league. Um, in our hometown town of Gahanna, Ohio, and from there kind of just stuck and enjoyed playing. And my parents didn't want me playing football, getting beat up, so um, soccer was their choice. I walked on at the University of Maryland. Um, coach was good enough or nice enough to give me a chance, and uh, you know, progressed from there until my junior senior year. There started to be a little bit more of a, of a buzz, and um, you know, then it started looking like maybe maybe professional soccer and living out that dream was a possibility, and so. You know, I'm very grateful to this day just to, to have had the chance to play in college and get an education through, the, through soccer, let alone uh, make a living doing it. And while many play soccer growing up, these guys say the transition to the pros has been the biggest challenge. Every day of practice is, is tough, and that's the biggest difference from the college to the pros is that, you know, every day you have to be on, you have to be, uh, you know, on top of your game or else someone's there ready to take your spot. And, if that happens, that's your career and your livelihood. So, you know, it's important stuff. So every day is a, a, a big day out there for us. Everything's pretty much spontaneous. I mean, there's definitely um, repetition things that you go over in practice, but for the most part, you can't draw up a play. Everything you have to react to on, uh, you know, on your own time. You have to read a given situation and respond accordingly. There's no timeouts. There's no real set plays besides on, you know, set pieces. Hang out with some of the New York Red Bulls, Michael Artsis, PressPassTV.com. We hope you enjoyed that segment. For more behind-the-scenes action, check out our website at PressPassTV.com or see our YouTube page at youtube.com slash presspass. We're updating stories daily. I'm Morgan Page for everyone here at Press Pass. Thanks for joining us. Bye.